Welcome everyone, this is a new Aikido Ultimate Arcade Warriors. This is the starter pack. These are very popular, people seem to love this toy. Uh, they're difficult to get in a lot of areas, getting the different figures on. They seem to be sold out in my area constantly on Amazon, um, which is very interesting. So this is very popular. Uh, this is one of the starter sets. Um, and one of the few sets, uh, from what I can see in their catalog, there's only two figures that fight with their feet. And this set has one of them. So I haven't tried this yet, so I don't know if the uh, this movement in the actual game uh, using your foot is an advantage uh, with the other warriors, which don't. I mean, they just use uh, their arms, and they have one or two weapons. Because all the figures are the same except for the one or two weapon variants, and of course the weapons are different. And of course you get with this Night Blade, which I've already got. This is a second one. Um, this one is, uh, who's that guy there? That is um, the Terminator Takinator, and this of course is Kick Attack. The High Hi Shy, Kick Attack, is this guy right here. And that's what we're going to open up and look at here in a minute. So, um, these all these figures are well made. This one, of course, comes with another hand control. I have the arcade, but uh, this way you could fight outside of the arcade because those um, handles don't really come off to be used individually too well. So you need one of these flat ones. But it's the usual movement. All the movement's the same. The only thing that changes is the figure and the um, actual weapons they have. So it's quite... Um, interesting there, but does the kicking action uh, assist in winning fights? Well, that's what we're going to have to find out. Uh, there's lots of little quirks with these things that you need to find out. Um, as with the arcade characters, uh, some of them uh, are much easier to knock out than the other ones. Hitting some of these larger heads and triggering them can be very difficult, uh, as we have with the arcade here. Now, here's the arcade, and generally, this figure right here is very difficult take out. you got to hit just perfectly this head, which is big. You can see how that doesn't come back too easy, and uh, this one comes back much easier. So to get this to trigger is quite a, a strike, and that's a problem when you're playing, and of course you could know that depending on your strategies against others, but there's all sorts of tricks involved, all sorts of little things. So I don't know if that kicking action, but there's only two figures. This is the one figure, and there's one other figure that you can get that uses kicking action. Okay, so let's open this. Uh, let's open this up. Here's the back of this particular starter kit. It shows you how they work. This is a cool figure I've been looking for, but it's constantly sold out. It just shows how it works. Now, here it shows you the figures you get in here. Nightblade, Haishi, and the Toxinator. And this does glow in the dark here. This figure I have in here is a glow in the dark figure. This, of course, fights with his feet. And this is a standard figure, Nightblade. I'm feeling that we're all going to get lots of these. There also is a little training... Um, uh, I don't know what you call that. A training uh, dummy or practice dummy um, that you get on there. So that's kind of nice as well. So let's open this up and take a look at um, <clears throat> take a look at all this. Okay, so let's open this up. Okay, let's see if we can ah, locked into the top here. Oops. 
behind the camera. There's that locked into the top here. Well, I've kind of jumped ahead here so we could just see the process of taking the figures out. Let's um, let's do that. So that figure. Here's the glow in the dark figure. Here's a little practice dummy. And of course, uh, th this is actually has some rubber bands on it, which are stronger than you would think. Okay, and then we take that off. So we've gotten rid of all the packaging, so we can take a look at these properly. This uh, goes down there. Here's Night Blade. And of course, I have another one here. See that uh, they are identical. So that's doubles I have there. Here's the Toxinator, which is kind of cool. So this is a real common figure. You get to see this a lot. And he's in a lot of the packages, so everybody's going to get a few of those. Um, and here's the actual figure, and we've got a rubber band on him as well. Which we're going to have to uh, cut off here. That's actually some sort of okay. This kind of pops out. I'm gonna take off the. Um, this is kind of a uh, clear, almost metal-like, and it's strapped onto the back here as well. So you have to cut off two rubber bands. I'm not sure why they. Put these things in so tight, but I guess there's some reason for it. Untwist it there without breaking it. And this is your typical breakaway. You know, they all break away the same. As you said, these seem to be very well made. Um, they're very strong. Um, I would think that these things would last for many, many years, um, which is nice to see somebody who makes something good. Get that head back in it. And they all break apart the same. You kick the head back and they fall open. That's what you're trying to do in the game. Um, and of course, they all fit on here. Let's put the, this dude on here. You generally align. There's two, um, there's two little arrows there that you align. Let's show this guy. And as I said, this glows in the dark. Let's get in there for some good views. I always like to see things up close and try and give you a long enough time to look at these things so you can kind of understand what you're getting if that's something you really want to get. Having lots of stuff, I think it's bad because you never use it and it just becomes a waste. Okay. So this glows in the dark. The same old story, and of course, you know, you hit him in the head here, and he falls apart. You can see the inners here. And then you just close them up again, pull the head down, and they're reset into place. Um, as I said, here, in case you haven't seen Nightblade, that's what that looks like. And again, oink. It pops open and you have that. And that's part of the gaming fun aspect of it, of course. And as I said, this is a very common figure. So you put them together, you push the head back in, it locks it into place. And, you know, the most difference is the actual uh, amount of weapons that these figures have. And the weapons do determine how well it fights. So one weapon is a, a big disadvantage. Now, this has a... Um, interesting weapon is that he's holding a um, a rifle by the barrel and swinging that around. So that's a fairly large weapon. It gives him, you can see how it gives him a lot of protection. Now, that rifle is right in front of his head, which you're trying to hit. So that's all part of it. Well, something like this You know, there isn't all that much protection here. It's got just a sword, so it's much easier to take this figure out. 
Now, what's interesting is, are these easy to take out or not? Because they don't have all that much protection because they're just kind of using their foot. There's no weapons at all. Now, it's got the... Um, uh, the usual arm that moves here and of course let's take a look at this close you can see how that looks and you can always test this you can see how easy these guys will knock out now this isn't that easy to knock out you can see I have to give that a really good hit and that's one of the problems with the different figures and when it opens up that's what it looks like and as I said then you push them together you push the head forward now the foot here now it has this arm that moves around that's really no protection now let's look at that head movement on um, on this now very easy to open this and that's something you can test on your figure so it was just a very slight pressure on here in this zone. So this tends to open better, and of course, this protection here is very poor. Now, this guy has no protection at all. So it'll be interesting how this is going to work when you're actually battling. Does that foot action, and this foot moves. There's a little, little bit of articulation here. And of course, the arm moves. Is that going to be good or bad? As I said, there's only one other figure like this, so I recommend people look for this so they have that variance uh, and see how it works for them. This could be a great advantage or not. I'll have to test this and get back to people on that. Um, but there's only two like this. So you're going to have to hunt for them. You either get this set, which has this one, and there's another set with another one that I've looked uh, through the instructions that I can see right now. You also have this test now, this is fun, particularly uh, as everybody has a fair amount of alone time. Um, you can't find somebody worth a poo that wants to play. So, you have these. Let me stick that down. You may need to use a particular... Oops, you may need to use a particular surface on this. But this is a great way to do some sort of... And you can see it don't work too good. <laughs> I've never used these alone before. There's one that hangs down in the tournament thing. But that's kind of cool. It does spin. When you hit these, you'll see how that uh, target spins. Uh, that's a nice little feature. They didn't necessarily have to do that. But each thing, each component here, and let's look at that separately, spins. This spins here, this spins here, and it spins the top. So that's kind of nice. They could have used a better or bigger suction cup. Uh, so it would be a little more practical. Let's try that again. Yeah, it's not going to work too well. Maybe if this was on glass. But, you know, who has glass sitting around? That you can work on some. Um, you're going to have to be okay. This is holding a little bit when I give it a little more. And you're not going to be able to hit this hard. So if you hit it really hard, you're going to knock it over. So if you're in the range to try and spin these, and that's what you're trying to do, Trying to figure out um, and get your aim better. But you can't really aim these things. I mean, this is a punchy uh, street fight. Day. You just get in there and uh, giving rabbit punches all the time. That's what it's really all about. But you can see it does work. You get a good sticking surface. Um, you can kind of spin those around. And that's kind of fun. And it does going to give you a certain amount of... Um, understanding of how your figure works. But, you know, you're not really controlling much uh, with these figures. This is the action you're doing. You don't, you can go in and out with your opponent. So do you want to move in and do it? Um, these are all the things that you can do to see what uh, connections you get. So that's kind of cool. Um, let's see how that works with the um, actual. And again, you have to line up. There's an actual little. You can see it there. And there's a there. So these two line up like this. And then just press together. So if you have them lined up properly, it works great. So let's see how this, this figure works in terms of.
but you can get you know you can get right in there and of course you're right at head level here this could be a great advantage of uh, taking out other uh, opponents so uh, it could be a great advantage we're gonna have to check that out but that's the you know, there's only two of them that have that foot action and uh, I find that very interesting um, be interesting to fight foot against foot and also oh, um, against standard figures would that tend to work better um, if you had something like this. And as I said, I'll put this on the arcade and show it there to see if there's any difference. Hard to say here because they're not at the same level, but certainly the foot is kicking, kicking at the head level, so if you can get in there. But it doesn't seem like it worked too easily on there, but that's not really a good comparison. Okay, so here's this figure. Let's get in there close. got that cool gun it's got this uh, and as you said it's glow in the dark figure not super strong but it is cool who doesn't like glow in the dark I don't know I find it fascinating even though it really doesn't do anything well there's that figure I don't know do I show this up close I don't know if I showed it up close so here it is close so you can see it and each one of these things spin as you kind of saw in the demonstration there, it spins at the bottom as well. It has that suction cup at the bottom. That suction cup is way too small. It should be double the size. That way you'd have a really good hold. Here's the different sides. It has that broom and, of course, as I said, the suction cup. And let's look at this guy again. We'll just pop him off his stand. And you do have to be careful. If you're rough with popping those on and off, I can see that's going to cause a lot of trouble. Well, as usual, they're very nicely made. They're very nicely painted. They seem to be very rugged. Uh, the, as I said at the beginning of this, I think these will last forever. They're very hard uh, plastic and rugged plastic. I don't think they're brittle hard. Um, they're painted very well. You got to give uh, Moose Toys uh, credit for that. They're out of Australia. And they, they copy things and make them a little better than the original. Even though the original karate fighters, I think, were better than these in terms of uh, flexibility. They kicked and punched. These certainly are very cool and they're very well made. Uh, they also copied crossbows and catapults with their Battleground series many years ago. Um, I wrote to them about if they were going to bring that back, and I never heard from them. Didn't heard from them in general after leaving them an email, and I think that's kind of rude. Um, but their Battleground sets were very cool-looking and very well-made, even though the actual uh, catapults and so forth were very underpowered and I think that's what killed the game I don't think people were interested you really couldn't get things out strong enough and that's something that we need to uh, deal with um, and um, so that people that sell these things are not liable for stupid things and of course uh, on the box it should say that these things are for you know 10 year olds 12 year olds that uh, can understand uh, not shooting things in people's eyes and stuff or maybe even requiring people to wear eye gear in my war gamings uh, that I will be coming up with here very soon people are required to wear eye gear there's a lot of projectiles going around that's what makes my war gaming series fun okay let's look at a little catalog here and we'll go over the um, the kick em feedy people let's see if we can find that on here um, so here's the catalog again of the different figures they offer. And, you know, they're all lots of fun and cool looking. They all basically do the same. It's either one 